We could survive that. We could survive that. We could survive that. Hello and welcome to We Could Survive That, your survival guide to the movies. My name is Jack and today I'm joined by a man who once played a high stakes snap game at Casino Royale. It's Chris. Hello everybody. What Jack left out for that was his uh, strip snap. Strip and snap. I'm a sh- yeah, oh, strip snap at Casino Royale. And I am ashamed to say that I lost. I have a funny feeling that's not the only reason security chucked me out, as I did realise afterwards <laughs> that strip is not an actual game they play at casinos. I should have realised this when the guy I was playing it with suggested we play it, you know, outside in the dumpsters. Yes. It just sounds like that you played strip poker with a hobo. Moving on, and moving he on. And you out of your clothes. No, 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 that's ridiculous. Let's, let's, let's keep going, moving on. <sighs> okay, so we're doing <laughs> a James Bond month now because um spectre's coming out and and we want to want to get through the the daniel craig film so we're going to start off with his first outing as james bond in casino royale which was released in 2006 was it really 2006 yeah yeah crap that was years ago it's a while ago now wow Mm. okay shall we jump straight in to the death of Casino Royale, or yeah, we should. Should, I mean, should we give some backstory? I would imagine it? most people would know what Casino Royale is. If you don't, just, you know, quick thing: it's Bond's origins. Terrorist banker wants some money, sets up a card game. Bond has to try and stop him winning all the money. That's the story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, let's jump in with the the two kills that get Bond his his double O status. Dryden't is sort of a mole guy in MI6 or he's he's turned bent he's selling information on the side to his informant guy um Dryden is shot by Bond who's broken into his office um taken all the bullets out of his gun so he's defenseless and and Bond just shoots him and this scene is intercut with Bond fighting Dryden's contact in a public toilet <laughs> Uh, Very he nice gets fighting. he gets the shit kicked out of him, doesn't he? Drowned in a in a sink and then shot. Do you want to focus on Dryden first or his contact? Uh, can we get the contact first? Okay, yeah. Okay, so contact fighting in the bathroom. After Bond drowns, or well, holds his head in the sink of water, uh, the contact then loses consciousness or or, or feigns losing he consciousness. Yeah, dead. Bond then drops him. Uh, walks away the contact then so he sits up grabs a gun goes to shoot Bond spins around and shoots him instead very easy situation to survive play dead is that what you're getting at yes once what you gotta do is what he did he faked basically faked passing out because I, I don't think he would have passed out and woke up that quickly to grab his gun so he, I'm assuming he faked passed out which is what I would have done so Bond would have dropped me and then I would have stayed laying on the ground I would have tried to shoot Bond just had a little peek Keep yeah, your maybe eyes closed, squint, but squint just your eye squint, open, yeah. wait for him to walk away a bit, and then I would have reached over to my gun, maybe. No, why even then... try to kill him? No, no, then no. If he just leaves the bathroom, he can get back up and call Dryden and go. Holy I, w- shit, I wasn't going to try and kill. There's a Bond. madman after I was us. Just, I was just saying, I'm going to get my gun anyway. I am, but I'm going to re- remain laying, you know, unconscious or dead. Although, mate, Bond, mate. To be honest, Bond might have thought he was faking it. Cause I would have thought. Bond should have realised holding him in that water for only a short period of time is not really long enough for somebody to lose consciousness. Mm. And he didn't even check after he dropped him out. He didn't like crouch down and check his pulse or anything. So unless Bond knew he was faking it, and he was like, I'm just going to make myself look cool here. It's a good setup for the intro as well. <laughs> but that's it'd what have, I would have It'd have looked really stupid if Bond had turned around with the gun and he's still laying on the <laughs> floor. laying on Bond, the floor. He would have been like, Daniel Craig's damn. like, oh, damn, that, that would have looked really good if it had jumped back But up. yeah, that's what I would have done. I, w- I would have feigned pass out and stayed unconscious slash dead on the floor Yeah. until Bond had actually fair. left and then I would have, you know, got him done with it. Or I would have kicked Bond's ass. <laughs> I would have kicked him all around that bathroom and I then I would have drowned him. I think that's easier said than done because Daniel Craig's Bond is a machine. He could yeah, well, beat up anyone. My guy in this is a machine. I'm a He's machine. He's clearly not. Give me he petrol gets, and like, Lucas aid. thrown through <laughs> bathroom walls and stuff. He just gets mullered. He doesn't stand a chance. Should have just, you know, returned to be unconscious and yeah, gone from there. I think we're in agreement on that. But yeah. what about Dryden? Ah. Now, this guy is working for... This is a guy that's working for MI6. Uh, yes, but he's he's selling information, so it's not very yeah, bad. It's MI6 or is it MI7? MI6. It is MI6, yeah. 
and that's it. He's leaking information or selling it to whoever, another government or organization or well, whatever. Well, he's selling it to a dead guy. Well, to a dead now dead guy, yeah. <laughs> In that line of work, especially if you're going to go corrupt, always wear body armor. Uh, does Bond shoot him in the head? In the head, yeah. Bollocks. Okay. He's wearing one of those weird woolly hat things. He could have had I don't that. think. I don't think Bond shoots him in the hat. Nah, uh, right. But <laughs> okay, I would have been. I would wear body armor anyway, just on the safe side. Keep more than one gun loaded. All right, yeah. You've kept a loaded gun in your office. Nah, you need to keep it on you. Mm. You have to keep the gun on you, loaded at all times. And then I would. I probably would have kept several other guns around the office. I wouldn't just have one in the drawer. Like, there'd be one in the drawer, one over That's, in the cabinet. Doesn't make for a very safe working environment if you. Not necessarily. You've got guns no. everywhere. You sit down on a chair and accidentally set off a shotgun. That's not great. Okay, I wouldn't put mine in the chair though. <laughs> yeah, don't. But I'd carry a gun with me at all times. Possibly have a couple of henchmen with you. You know, like. Well, he gets dropped off at his office. So I think he thinks he's relatively safe there. No, I I'd, think this is like I would he's. Be, um, he's I imagine this Dryden's uh, just gone to the office to pick up some supplies and then he's he's going to disappear and and go and he doesn't want henchmen being witnesses to to his disappearance. If I was going to be one of these big bad villains or I was going corrupt and you know, so information, I would be so paranoid all the time. I would have henchmen with me that I would change on a bi-weekly basis and when I say change, I mean I would kill the current henchmen and get new ones. I think that would draw suspicion M's going, Triton, you're you're going through um, members of, of the team quite quickly. Well, why do you need so much money and no, no, hiring no, no. These, so many people? The people are are be... these off-the-books henchmen? Yeah, they, yeah, these wouldn't be henchmen I'm going to get through MI6, is it? That's just ridiculous. <laughs> no, these are going to be like... Well, you might try and be cheeky and have it as like um, tax-deductible. Yeah. <laughs> Triton no, seems like happen. that kind of guy. He'd be cheeky. Another thing, he that's walks... probably how M finds out that he's he's the mole, he's yeah. corrupt. Also, he walks in and sits down, and he's off. Turn the lights on. Sit, walks in, turns the light on, sits down, and then notices Bond in the corner. Again, my paranoia. I'd open the door and I'd be like looking around, see Bond in the corner, just be like, "Oh, right, hook in your face." And Bond would be like, "Oh no, no, that wasn't going to happen." And I'd be like, "What's this? Have I got your gun?" But dang, blew his brains out everywhere. I think Bond would be more prepared. It doesn't that, seem like Dr- it. Dryden's a bit older than Bond, so Bond would be able to. But my have him Dryden in a fist is fight. a machine. No. Yes. He would be destroyed in a fist fight. I think he should just be more prepared, have more guns, and carry henchmen with him. Carry henchmen. Carry like henchmen on his shoulders. Them. Piggyback henchmen up and around, and that's what I would do to survive two Bond attacks. Uh, I don't know how would you survive this. As Dryden, just disappear. Don't go keep, back to the office. Yeah, keep whatever was so important in that office at your house. No, nah, that's not the first place they would go to, his house. No, because he'd already be there and it would be harder for Bond to sneak into where he already is because then he'd be able to hear where Bond is. How do you know he was already there? How? What, he went from his house to the office? Do you know that? Can you, can you yeah. prove that? No, we can't prove anything because we're given very little information on this. Well, there thing. we go then. Just don't be a dick, Trident. Yeah, just don't go corrupt in the first place. Mm. You know, he's probably getting good money anyway in his position. So he agreed. He just wants a little bit more money. Yeah. Or he doesn't agree with what MI6 is doing. No, it's definitely the money thing. Oh. Dick. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a bad person. Or, or, bribes. Or no, that's do. why he's been targeted no, to be killed. Do. Because he probably accepts bribes. But all you got to do no, is you got to slip... That's like... the reason why he's on this hit list. <laughs> you do slip you like... can't bribe your way out of it. <laughs> no, is... moving on. <laughs> right, we get this um, great chase uh, in Madagascar with uh, a free-running expert. He's French. His name is Sebastian Focan. Professional um, free run in real life. Yes, yes. This chase is 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 great fun because Bond, he's not very athletic, but he just runs through everything. Literally, yeah, there's he a bit smashes through a wall. There's a bit where the free runner goes through this small gap, and you think, oh, "Why is Bond going to catch up with him?" He just runs through the wall. <laughs> yes, yeah, smashes that whole down, that he? whole thing is is filled with bits like that. There is a point in this chase where Bond could have been killed quite easily. Which is on on the cranes. There's a there's a fight on a pair of cranes. Bond is left hanging there. The character's name is Molak. He jumps from one crane to another onto a building. Mm-hmm. He could have just stepped on Bond's fingers and 
No, nah, and kicked him off to his death nah, or something. No, nah, you know what would have happened. He would have tried that, and Bond would have grabbed hold of his foot and just pulled him down or something. It, it would have happened. You, we both know it would happen. Also, you um, at the end of the chase when Bond unpacks uh, Malak's bag, there is a bomb in the bag. Could yes. he have used the bomb on the crane? <laughs> Probably not, because the bomb was obviously meant for something else, wasn't it? Yes, for but another he, target. He's he's in he a res- he gets he's a in a dire message. situation. He has a chance to to take out Bond, leave the bomb on the crane, and then jump to the other crane. And then yeah, while Bond know. is pulling himself up, the bomb goes off and Bond is killed, either by the explosion or the falling crane. Mm, no, because I think he's too scared of using that bomb in case the other guy who sends him the the text it says like ellipse on it or something doesn't it yeah which is a password for um airport security in miami is that why he also texted the the, the bomb mate the bomb maker in madagascar as well yes because he was the original guy that was meant to try and blow up this plane exactly so if he used the the bomb then yeah but he's a bomb maker i'm sure he can get other supplies also a few days pass um as well so i'm sure he could have made another bomb He's not going to be carrying around the bomb he's going to use in a in a job two days from now. It might go off. Why not? He might be a very prepared terrorist. Well, clearly not, because he dies. No. <laughs> but anyway, so he does the chase scene. Uh, they, they get, get to, to an, an embassy. It is an embassy, yeah. Um, bond walks in, grabs, grabs the bomb maker, and it ends in a standoff uh, with Bond holding him hostage and a bunch of military guys. Bond gives him over and then shoots a um a propane tank. Explosion No wait, he shoots the bomb, shoots maker, the bomb maker, then he shoots a propane tank, explosion and he disappears. Mythbusters did an episode. Yeah. Shooting the the propane tank with Bond's caliber gun wouldn't work. It would just ding off. It wouldn't explode. So that uh, that wouldn't work in real life. What gun was Bond using? Was using? He's just a handgun. Yeah, but what handgun though? A handgun. Yeah, but is you it confuse his, me for someone is that it knows his guns. traditional PKK gun or whatever it, it is wouldn't that he work. uses. The, the MythBusters tried it; it wouldn't work. Well, how do you know Bond's not using specialized bullets for MI6 that are specifically designed to penetrate through hard metal? Yeah, because that seems like a weird. Oh, they they put all the money that they were using for laser guns in space and invisible cars into into bullets yeah and it paid off it worked <laughs> mm. okay um hmm set off the bomb <laughs> oh, if saying? it had killed Bond earlier then, then none of this would have happened none of this would have happened exactly see that's where the crane thing comes in there is method uh, okay in yeah and then he's safe in the in the embassy and then when it comes on the news that a crane has blown up he can go oh it wasn't me I was here this whole time I think what I would have done is after Bond had taken me hostage you know, he like he pushes him back, doesn't he? And then he shoots him. Yeah. As soon as he pushed me, I would have instantly dived to the side, like behind somebody, and then I would just have, I would have parkoured my way out of there instantly. I just wouldn't hang around. I he's been shot in the leg at this point, so he couldn't run away. That's fine. I, I, I bullet my leg doesn't mean anything. I can run. It kind of does. No, no. He would need to stay there for medical attention as well. Ah, uh, because of the injury. All right, set the bomb he's off there. He's not parkouring. Just, just kill everybody. No, he's Let's there for done. safety. Yeah, why does he go into an embassy with a bag with a bomb? And they let that, him in. That, yeah, that well, he jumps look the wall, good. doesn't he? I'm sure the security... No, he doesn't. He walks no, straight in. No, he walks in. in through the bomb It's a corrupt the embassy then, isn't it? Obviously. Because when what, Bond grabs yeah. him, he shoots the guy he's talking to. What, the embassy? No, Bond doesn't kill anyone oh, in wait, the embassy. Oh, wait, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. No. No, I do apologise. That would be a real shitstorm. Bond would definitely be fired. Yeah, he here. someone in an embassy. Yeah, they they take great pains to show Bond not killing anyone in that embassy, even the security guards. And he, yeah. so he shoots them in the legs, doesn't he? Yeah, he shoots some of them in the legs. He shoots a steam pipe that distracts some of them. He throws some of them down the stairs and they all do Jenga. No, Domino's people. Domino's <laughs> yeah. So, uh, this is a difficult one because, I mean, Bond pushes him and then there's about two seconds and then he shoots him straight away, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh. Uh. Don't be a bomb maker. All right, or yeah. kill Bond I think earlier. You, yeah, your idea is better. Take Bond out earlier before he gets yeah. to the embassy. Because once he gets in the embassy, it's game over. There's mm. there's not much he can do. Because he, he if his he sets gun off the, the bomb, that makes him the enemy. Mm. So he, he can't do that. So set off the bomb earlier. And he loses his gun on the crane, doesn't he? 
Yeah, well, he shoots fight. He shoots all the bullets and he throws the gun at Bond on the crane, but Bond just catches it and throws it back in. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good moment. Take a spare gun. Uh, or don't use up all your bullets. He shooting. should have a knife on him. And what should He's got a bomb on him. Well, a knife, and then when Bond's hanging, you just stab him in the hand. Or while he's hanging, use a bomb. Or a bomb, yes. Either yes. way. I think we're going to agree there and take out yes. Bond before getting to the embassy. Thank you. Next death is Alex Dimitros, who is killed in a quiet knife fight in this body exhibit thing. So Alex's job was to find Le Chief, uh, a bomber, to, to, to um, explode this plane and he makes a drop off with um all the equipment needed to break into the um to break into the airport bond catches up with him alex puts a knife into the back of bond bond turns around they have a quiet struggle and bond ends up uh stabbing alex i would have gone about that quite differently at this point you've made the drop off the guy that's actually going to detonate the bomb has already collected the token etc etc knows where he's going he's got well, the information um, the fight, I think, distracts Bond just long enough for the um for the second bomber to grab the stuff. Well, is that it? That's what I would have done. Rather than putting the knife into the back of Bond's back and be like, right, let's uh, let's go and walk you out of here and all this lot. I just would have gone up behind Bond, slipped it into his back, like you know, into his back. There's a there's a point where I think it's like halfway or lower down. If you put it straight into the spine, they lose their legs. That's it. Just kill him. Well, no, that's what you're saying. Because if you try to paralyse him, he'll shout, I've been paralysed by that man. Yeah, okay, you might get arrested, or but the bomb maker's sneak... already taken the stuff and has left. Or just sneak out. Cause no, because Bond's Bond watching is... him. No, Bond is looking the other way, and he's able to sneak up behind him oh, with course, the knife, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. So just sneak out. No, I wouldn't Don't sneak confront out. Bond. I would confront, but I wouldn't hold hostage. I would have done like an Assassin's Creed thing. While walking past him, I would have just literally stabbed him right to the side. I doubt Alex is a Assassin's Creed kind of guy. <laughs> no, but I, I would have walked past, and I would I would have slipped the knife just right into his back, like into the spine, pull it out, and carry on walking. So you wouldn't have tried to Bond would move have... him out like he does in the film. You'd have no, just no, 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 by no. stabbed him and, and he'd kept continue walking. walking. Bond would have held to the floor and be like, "Oh no!" Everyone would be rushing around him. Oh, like, oh my god, he's stabbed. You go out in all the chaos and confusion. You've left. The guy who's got all the bomb, he's got the token for the bombing. He's left. Bond is quite hardy, so I think if you stabbed him, he'd turn around and just punch you. No, not if you not if you get him right. He, his legs, you take out his legs instantly, and he just collapses before S- anything can happen. Stab him in the leg. No, because then he would turn or, around and punch right, you. Here's what you could do: you could slip the knife into the back of his trousers and then shout for security in the um, museum. Oh, go, yeah. Look, he's, he's got, got, a, got knife, a knife. He's yeah. armed. Arrest him. That could be a good idea. And then he can't foil your plan. Yeah, stealth is Alex's best option in this case. Yeah, just try be to sneaky. hold on to Bond like that. I mean, you must be able to see Bond's size. He's bigger than you. He's pro- <laughs> he's probably going to be stronger than you. And I think if you're trying the walk past stab thingy with Bond, if you don't get it right, he will kill you. All right, Alex dies, and Bond goes after the second bomb maker. All chases ensue in um. Uh, the airport there's a foot chase and there's a chase with a tanker truck and 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 stuff uh there's a fight in the tanker bond is hanging out of the tanker he's hanging down he sees this little uh detonator bomb thing he grabs it from underneath the the tanker hooks it onto the second bomber's belt and then when the bomber jumps out bond stops the truck He's then arrested. The bomber sets off the bomb that he thinks is underneath the tank truck and ends up exploding himself. So the bomber's plan, get a tanker full of petrol, drive it into the thing, blow it up. So he's got a tiny bomb. I was going to say, it is a really tiny bomb when you look at it. It's minuscule. Mm. But he he was only using that just to set off um, the fire and explode the the tanker. Does he need a better plan? Hmm, it's difficult. I'm I'm not that well versed in you know bomb attacks. I mean, I can see the logic behind the idea. Because he gets how he it through it security, doesn't he? he? Yeah, that's only because he dresses as a security guard. So you know, no, no, he gets through security with it's disguised as like a keychain. One oh, of the security it, yeah. guards looks at him. and He goes, oh, "Okay, that's fine." Then he gets through 
um, using the ellipsis code word into like the security guards changing rooms then he changes into the security guard outfit and and that's how he's able to get access to like the tanker truck and stuff that was it okay be more observant feel that your belt is heavier yeah, in how some heavy way. is this device i mean it must be really light for you not to notice yeah it it's, off it's your not belt. that big so he probably wouldn't feel it is on it's him. bleeping though isn't it it's going doot, 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 yeah doot, he presses the button it. then it does the bleeps it bleeps then, then he looks around to see where the bleeping is coming from realizes it's on his belt tries to unhook it but by then it's too late and he he explodes don't wear a belt have trousers that don't have you know the ability for a belt to be worn on them yeah again the only reason bond sees this is because he's kicked out the tanker truck to wear the devices That's it. he's under, like hanging out it. the truck isn't he so he sees so it so maybe when bond is hanging out there throw him out also, why do you hook it to underneath the truck? Did it have to be there for a specific reason? Probably that's where the fuel line is or something. Or could you to could start you just off like the explosion? I don't know. I, think I don't think you could have it in the truck in the in the cabin with the driver. I mean, the explosion on it its would own, have to be near the fuel because it's a very small one. Yeah, but the explosion on its own seems quite powerful. When it does detonate, it's quite a big explosion. Well, you don't really see that. Well, like, for obvious reasons, to keep their twelve A rating, they could <laughs> show a man being exploded. But I imagine. They he needed it close to the fuel, and that would be like uh, under the fuel line. So he'd he'd have to have it quite close. Hmm. So Maybe. again, just throw Bond out of the truck, and then Bond knows where it is, but he can't catch up to it in time. Yeah. Or run Bond over. Perhaps realize Bond was there and intercept him in the airport before. Well, he he'd sees Bond. Um. Well, he realizes that he's being tailed. And he tries to lose him. Or he should then. Once he's put the but security uniform on, well. he should. And then he should have shouted to the other guards, like, that guy there, I've just seen him put a gun in his back pocket or something. And then security would have been all over Bond, and you can just go. Well, what he does, he sets off the fire alarm. So that, well, it doesn't really hinder Bond, but all the guards are preoccupied trying to. Because I imagine that the guards would go, hey, you, you're. Are you new? Who I don't recognise you. I yeah, don't see you something. working. Is this your first day? I wasn't told about. So he's he's set the fire alarm off to distract all the guards because they would recognise that he's not one of them. Right. Okay. I still think and, and I would have tried for ID um, as well. And I'm not sure how good to the forgery. I don't know, but I, I think I'd so if you'd pointed to Bond while wearing your security uniform and said, "I've just seen that guy's got a gun." I think before they question you if they don't recognise you, they'll see the uniform and then they'll just go for Bond straight away. And which, but then Bond would go, he's got a bomb. And then you'd be really torn. No, because they'd be going for Bond, at which point you turn and you just go. You just go, what you need diversions. Then, 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 you need to get Bond, Bond in say, trouble. No, Bond would say, no, he's a terrorist. And when you're walking away, they'll go, hang on, where are you going? And then and you got that a, would be very suspicious. Nah. That you're running away All from right, the situation. All right, don't do that then. Um, get a rocket launcher. Don't have launcher. a bomb. Don't so you're not in the air. No, right, hear me out. <laughs> Get a rocket launcher, a long range one, so you don't even have to go into the airport and and use that rather than having to get up close. No, I think what he should have done is rather having a bomb that clips on like that, he should have it so it sticks. So once it was stuck to the bottom, that's it. It's, it's on there. Like you need to get some. His bun's not going to be able to pull it off and stick it onto you. B- but would you be able to make that look like a keychain? Yeah, have it still look the same, but have some sort, you know, like adhesive Velcro. Or something. Not Velcro, but something a stronger. Prick stick. I don't know. <laughs> have something. Have some, maybe you've got some chewing gum in your mouth that you know is actually yeah. But, something but else. the danger with that is it might fall off because he's driving pretty fast and erratically. No, so I'm it saying might it's not off. actual chewing gum though. It's something. I know, else but that's the that's the gum. danger of yeah, it. Yeah. Well, get something where it won't fall off. Well, he does. Fuck he's say. got it hooked on there. <laughs> no, don't use a hook. But that's what he's done, and it doesn't fall off. Right, so. I say either take out Bond in the airport, have Bond arrested beforehand, or use something else to stick to the truck. Any of those three things, and you would have succeeded. And Bond wouldn't have kicked, strapped a bomb onto you and blown you up. Or thrown Bond out of the truck. Or throw him out of the truck properly. Although he does that, doesn't he? And he Bond like runs after him. Uh, no, Bond runs after the truck and jumps on onto it exactly somehow. so even then Bond <laughs> catches up 
I don't know how he does that. How does he do it? Because he runs, he runs up, up some stairs and jumps onto the top of the tank truck. That's correct, yeah. I think this is just as he um, he's starting to get going. Because I don't imagine the acceleration on one of them is very good. So that I, I'm down, guessing man. that's how... Swerve. Don't drive near some stairs. Or you see Bond stop and reverse over him. <laughs> think how slow it is accelerating. The reversing would be even slower. Bond would just jump up onto it. Drive a double-decker bus into it. Where is he getting the bus from? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, uh, moving on. Are we stumped by that then? Well, I gave three suggestions, so all of them terrible. No, all of them brilliant. <laughs> okay, then we finally get to the the card playing of Casino Royale uh, with Le Chief's big um plot to make loads of money. Uh, would it have been wiser for Le Chief to buy loads of lottery tickets instead of high stakes poker game? No, because I don't think he would have won enough. What, had you won the lottery like he would have spent so much trying to win it and it, no it's just something not cool and what sort of thing is that the big it's so much cooler <laughs> to do the high stakes poker game isn't it then I'm just going to play the lottery and hope I win your money back since he owns it to yeah. the is it you, to Ugandan yeah he owes it to um, mm. the Ugandan terrorists or, or freedom fighters or whoever they are they're not very nice people no because they threaten to chop off Le Chief's girlfriend's arm so yeah, yeah, we move on to the uh, Oh yeah, the, the poker, poker game. game. That's what we were talking about. Okay. <laughs> so midway through the poker game, um the people that the chief owes money to break into his hotel room and basically threaten him uh get the money back or we we're, we're going to to kill you. Um Bond follows the chief up to his hotel room. He hears the screams of the the girlfriend. He then ducks out just as the Ugandan people are coming out. One of them spots that Bond has an earpiece, opens fire on Bond, he ducks to a um, fire escape, a set of stairs going down. Uh, Bond throws the guy with the gun off the landing all the way down the stairs and he hits the floor and then the second guy comes at him with a machete, they fight all the way down the stairs until Bond gets him on the floor and strangles him. It's also good at the end of that fight uh, they they both fall over the railing, but because they're so low down, it doesn't. It's like a, a it's a tiny yeah. little fall, isn't mm. it? <laughs> I like that. But yeah, the first guy, what dumbass? He's too he's too eager. He, he runs doesn't in check with a the gun. Corners, I know. Why would you? And that's run how in? Bond is able to sneak up and just toss him over the railing. Really? Shouldn't you send the guy with the machete in first? Why would you run into no, close no, quarters? No, no, you send the guy with the gun in. First. No, why do you send somebody in close quarters with a handgun? Because it's. You can still use a handgun in close combat. It's not like it's a shotgun, where it's just unwieldy in a small area. Well, he obviously doesn't work very well on this one, does he? That and the guy with the gun is closer anyway, because the guy with the machete is just walking off, and then it's the guy with the gun that spots Bond's earpiece. So the machete guy's like, what? What's going on? And then follows the gun guy, then sees the gun guy being thrown off the railings and then has a fight with Bond. So more communication between the two. Maybe if the guy with the gun goes, hey, there's a guy there. The the guy with the machete is not like, oh, God, God. he's gone on a wild goose chase again. Oh, here we go. Oh, dear. It was just that last week. <laughs> he just he just goes off and, oh, no, wait, there really is a guy there and he's just killed him. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, whoopsie. <laughs> so this better communication, be better teamwork, maybe. Don't go running in with a handgun. If you sent the machete guy in first... And he after... still would have been thrown over. Exactly. Exactly. It's my point. You send the machete guy in, Bond throws him over, you can now just shoot Bond because you can see him. I think Bond would throw him over and then duck back to cover. Nah, well, I would be aiming the gun at him. To... All right. Say you and me were going after somebody. And you, you had a machete and um, I had a handgun. Hey, why am I the machete guy? Why why, why do you want me to be thrown down some stairs? Because why is, are you sacrificing this is my, this me? This is my plan. This is how I plan to survive it. And you were going to enter a room with a machete. And I would be standing there with my gun trained on you, watching. Threatening me, go in first or I'll shoot you. Oh, well, I'll you. shoot you. And then as soon as somebody attacks you and takes you out, they're now my lane, lane of fire, a line of fire, and then I will shoot them. Done. So your way of surviving this is to sacrifice one of the guys. Specifically you. Great. Well, not necessarily sacrifice, but... Go on, let's Well, no, yeah, because if you it. send him in first, he'd die because he gets thrown down the stairs because you you're just saying yeah the guy that gets thrown down the stairs he's he's gone up but we can save the machete guy maybe what 
should have happened is when he was thrown over the um, the machete guy. No, sorry, the gun guy was thrown over. Just grab hold of the railings and pull yourself back up. No, it's not he's, hard. He is thrown. He's he's nah. thrown. He's too far away nah. to to get to the railings. All right, here's what you do: when you're falling towards the ground, you fire the guns. You find a gun no. at the ground to use the force to no. slow you down. <laughs> You've been watching the A Team. They do that with a tank. Did they? I've not seen the A Team. Yeah, it's not that great. It sounds awesome. Okay. No, better teamwork <laughs> between the two guys. Clear the corners, because he just runs straight in front and, and doesn't see Bond hiding behind the corners. But yeah, yeah, better teamwork. Maybe the machete guy should have, you know, done more macheteing and actually got Well, he in does there. quite a lot of macheteing, but uh, he just gets killed by Bond. Maybe have three guys go in and threaten the sheath. Oh, yeah, three guys. And then the third guy would probably be more useful. Because I think Bond, they might have overpowered Bond if two had machetes. If you had to fight two people with machetes on the stairs, yeah, they might have overpowered him a bit more. Doesn't Vespa turn up, though? Yeah, Vespa's there, and she, while Bond is strangling the machete guy, the machete guy goes for the gun, and Vespa stops him getting the gun. So if there was a third guy there, he would have stopped Vespa stopping the machete guy He would have taken Vespa out and got the gun and shot I don't think Bond would have been focused able on strangling to... somebody if there was a yeah, third Bond guy. Yeah, Bond wouldn't have been able... If he hadn't taken out the gun guy as quickly as he did, Bond would have been overwhelmed quite quickly by the two. Okay, so here's what you do. When you're planning to threaten somebody and you're taking some of your terrorist buddies, however many people are taken, add one more. Yeah. Just in case. I'm gonna No, but, but then that would get really overcrowded because you go, I'm going to take two... No, I'm going to take three. But now I'm taking three. I have to take four. No, no, no. Whatever number you're taking... You'd have a whole plane you always, full of them. You always add one more to whatever number you're taking, just to be on the safe side. Mm. And the person you add is who you send in first to all the situations. Yeah. That, and Le Chiffre's got a few henchmen with him as well. If um, Le Chiffre had, had had the henchmen in the hotel room with him, I don't think the Ugandan guys would have been... They would have been outnumbered, basically. So maybe yeah, they I'd... should have taken the same amount of people as Lashif had henchmen. Because there's two of them. If Lashif had had his guys with him, I think his bodyguards would have killed them. Mm, and then Lashif could have kept all maybe. the money. But then no, he I don't had... think Lashif would want them dead because they'd be breaking our voice. Because if they die, they're going to send more people. That and he would uh, he'd have um, quantum after him or Mr. White's organisation which is, is quantum which is in the next film so that wouldn't be very good nah, so you Mr. Aware. White gets to him anyway because he pisses him off yeah he gets so. him anyway <laughs> so yeah so all you need to do bring more people yes yes that's a good call that's a very good call okay so we get to Le Chief's death now Bond wins the poker game with the help of um, Felix Leiter uh, but Le Chief doesn't take this very well so he captures Bond tortures him for a bit in this weird boat thing it looks like a boat yeah yeah very painful yeah. torture method basically hits him with a rope to a knotted the rope to the testicles while he's, yeah. he's strapped naked to a chair that's had the seat cut out and just swings underneath mm. his legs fortunately mr white comes in and shoots Le Chief in the head before Le Chief can cut off bond's testicles and feed them to him because that's what he threatens to do yeah, so I was aware of that. that that's the Hannibal in him talking. Yeah, yeah. Hannibal, as we... Mad, Mads Mikkelsen, who plays the No, if it was the Hannibal talking, he'd want to eat the testicles and his liver with a nice Chianti. <laughs> <laughs> it's God's sake. Right, I'm not going to get into the whole Hannibal story and we'll, we'll, we'll focus on, on the film. Eat Mr. White. <laughs> no, don't eat Mr. White. <laughs> What weird torture method he uses as well. What made him decide to use that torture no, method? No, it's very effective. Well, obviously not, because Bond just starts laughing at him. If it have hit him more, like a lot more... And popped one of his testicles. Yeah, oh. just, just hit him repeatedly, because he only hits him a few times. The sheaf could have hit him a lot more before. Um, yeah, I think, I think he's taking it easy on him. Toying with him, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, make, making him think, oh, this isn't so bad, before then ramming it up. But again, I don't think getting the code out of Bond would have helped, because Mr. White goes, um, look, Le Chief, we can't trust you anymore. You're an irritant now, so I have to take you out, because you know too much. 
So even if Le Chief had managed to break Bond, I think Mr. White would have killed him anyway. Have henchmen in there with you. Don't have them stationed outside because they get killed instantly. Have the henchmen stationed in there. One by the door. So as soon as the door opens and White, Mr. White walks in or... Was it Mr. White that actually comes in? Yeah, yeah. So as soon as Mr. White walks in, your henchman turns and just shoots him dead. Hide behind Bond! Use it's a Bond very a small body room shield. and he's not got any... All he's got is the rope and a That's knife. all you need. That's all you need, sunshine. That's all you need. The guy comes in, you throw the knife at him, uh, hits him in the hand. Oh no, he can't fire his gun. You charge him that knot of the rope. You crack no. him around the face of it. He's on the floor. You no. get the knife. You get the rope around him and you strangle him. Done. The sheep's not really a fighter. Uh, yeah, maybe not, but in we the don't... heat of the moment... No, he, he, he's too scared. Because when Mr. White comes in, he's like, oh, he start, he's bargains with him straight away. He just mm. goes, I'll, I'll have your money, don't worry. And Mr. White's like, no, it's Unleash too late. your inner cannibal. Mads Mickelson, it's in there. <laughs> and uh, if you ever watched the... Hey, re- Mr. White, do you fancy a piece of Bond's testicle? <laughs> Yeah. How about wherever the money, I give you some testicles of Bond. I'll give you Mr. Bond. Mr. White hums about this for a little bit and goes, mm. Why do they I'm, let... I'm good, I'm good. They let... Oh, yeah, because Vesper agrees to hand over the money yeah. anyway, yeah. doesn't she? Yeah, that was it. I was about to say, why don't they take Bond? And then I completely forgot. No, that's why, because Vesper makes a deal with Mr. White. So, yeah, mm. he's dead. Unless he can fight him off with a rope which I don't think he can because Mr. White's on the other end of the room and the rope isn't that long. Exactly, that's why you throw the knife at him to take him out first, to disable his handgun, and he then you go in there. He wouldn't be able to throw it that far. And he would have been shot as soon as he tried to make a move. <sighs> Alright, hide behind Bond then. And then Mr. White shoots Bond and then you've got nowhere else to hide. Then you keep behind him behind Bond and he's going to have to get closer or run out of bullets, isn't he? Done. I'm Bond's sure a big he... guy. You you got you got. He some... sat on a chair. You got You'd stuff have to, to pick him up. And as soon as you you don't like... pick him up, you just crouch behind him. Yeah, but then Mister White would just move around him. And then you turn. You... And you... Mister White no. moves around. You scramble Le around, Chief turning is the not chair. Not that small that he can just run around <laughs> Bond forever, <laughs> no, no, dodging Mister White. You don't run around Bond. You crouch down behind Bond, right? So Bond's facing it. I'm sure Mister White would just on, shoot a leg, and then he'd be on the floor, and then he'd. It, no, it's not very I'm cr- dignified. No, I am crouched down in a squirm position behind Bond. Every time Mr. White moves, I'm turning the chair so Bond is constantly facing him. He will run out of bullets or he'll get close. Either way, and no, then I strike. At this point, Bond is on the floor because Le Chief kicks the chair oh, over. Oh, for fuck's sake. Stand Bond's him up then. The as soon as, stand him up as quickly as possible. No, because you go to stand him up and Mr. White would just shoot you. No, I, I'm... I'm no, I'm done. That's my survival. No, it's Nailed it stu- straight away. You'd have to I lay live. on the floor next to That's Bond fine. and somehow get the chair that up is before fine. Mr. White shoots you. Yeah, That's, that's perfectly feasible. Terrible. Do you know how I would have survived? How? I would have won the poker game. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, yeah, that's, that's my life, basically. Enough. Okay. Uh, the last couple of deaths in, in Casino Royale come in Venice uh, Bond and Vesper go away and Vesper betrays Bond and tries to give this money from the poker game to a Mr. Gettler who is a guy with an eye patch glasses thing the yeah. glasses but one of the sides is, is blanked out which is pretty cool yeah they take Vesper hostage lock her in uh, elevator um, Bond has to take out all of Gettler's henchmen it comes down to Bond, one of Gettler's goons, and Gettler himself. Bond is fighting this guy on a staircase. Gettler comes down, shooting a nail gun, because they've, they've wasted all the bullets trying to shoot Bond. Uh, Bond gets hit by a nail, dodges down the stairs with one of these goons, hits the goon and Gettler with a chair. Uh, Gettler drops the nail gun. Then Bond electrocutes the the goon with um some wires and stuff. Gettler tries to jump on Bond, try and strangle him, but Bond just throws him off, picks up the nail gun and shoots him in the eye. Wouldn't it be great if that Gettler his glasses, he had those special glasses where um they turn dark when it's sunny and, and then they be... they'd <laughs> broken so one turned dark and stayed dark. All the time. And that's why he couldn't see very well. Mm. Maybe if his depth perception was better. Maybe if he had both his eyes, he would have been able to shoot Bond sooner with a proper gun rather than a nail gun. It's just a thought. Yes, that, that is true. That could have worked. 
So basically, don't be blind in one eye. <laughs> is that what you're saying? So you can aim a gun properly. Have more henchmen with him. Yeah. He, oh no, he has some more. He Bob has some henchmen, along but, the way, but they all they? die. And, and yeah, hmm. they're just basically shot. So it comes down to those two. When Bond electrocutes the other guy, don't run and try and jump on him. Pick the nail gun back up and shoot Bond in the back of the head or something. Because that's how yeah, Bond that's kills Gettler. So there are still nails in in it. Do you know what they should have done? They should have some grenades. And when they're fighting in there, he should have just dropped one. Like, just exploded half the building. Because the building starts to flood anyway. Well, the building collapses anyway. Because they shoot the, the support they shoot for the, it, Yeah, I the flotation yeah. devices. So all you got to do then is just... Yeah, if you dropped a hand grenade... It would cause so much havoc, and you know what? It There's a lot of havoc going on anyway. I know, but... Don't encourage so more havoc. No, always more havoc. Oh. Have Maybe have one of those little keyring bombs that the Obama uses, <laughs> and just be like, put it with a Bond's belt, and be like, hey, oh, no, I've seen... Yeah, boom! Blended. Done. No, I don't think it no. has one of them. Okay, when you go in, you you, you, mate, you leave loads of scuba diving gear in there. You get in there, you put your scuba diving gear on, and then you shoot the flotation devices. Well, I don't think they're planning on going there. They're, it's mm. just, that's the drop-off point. Bond shows up. They have to retreat into this building. Otherwise, Bond is going to kill them all. They should have made contingency plans, though. Like When you're preparing something like this, you should always make plans like, okay, this is the drop-off point. Yeah, they, they have this is what we're going to do if this goes wrong, this happens, or this happens. They had, they had snipers... What so load of the, good they were. Yeah, well, they held Bond off long enough for them to escape into the into the collapsing building. So without the snipers, then Bond what probably would have What a place to them. escape to. Well, that's the only place that they could get to. Where can we go? The building's collapsing. No, they could have jumped easily into the water and swam. Well, they go into the building and they set up snipers in the building. So as soon as Bond goes through, the snipers just kill him. But Bond is clever and shoots the things that are holding up the building so they probably weren't expecting Bond to go all kamikaze and bring down a whole building just to get to Vesper and Gettler Bond's a maverick you can't you can't predict never, him yeah okay here's what you do do your research properly on Bond and never underestimate him contact Ian Fleming find out exactly what you know Bond's psyche is all like Fleming's dead read the books he's been dead for some time I know Fleming is dead at the moment so how would you call him? Because during this, this is Casino Royale. So Fleming would have been alive at this point. No, I, I don't think Fleming lived till 2006. <laughs> no, 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 I don't mean lived till 2006. I mean, like, book-wise, imagine you just write the book, though. Yeah, but this bit doesn't happen in the book. Does it not? No. I didn't know that. I mean, Gettler shows up in the book, but you don't have a shootout with him. Oh, I didn't know that. I've not read the book. Well, I have. Well, it's the, fine. the bit with the plane doesn't happen, but I think the torture scene is pretty bang on. Using it, Bond is tortured in some way, mm. but yeah. Okay. Um, the hmm. middle bit is in the book, but the end and the beginning bit isn't. I would say to carry. So Gettler's. This wasn't in the book. What are you, what doing? Are you doing? Exactly. What are you doing, you crazy son of a bitch? Exactly. That's what they should have done. They should have read all the books first. Again, I don't think that would have helped because all the books are in the wrong order. <sighs> oh, no, the films are all in the wrong order. I could say. Because this uh, Casino Royale's the first one and then Live and Let Die's the second one. Read the book. <laughs> Just read the book. Again, it wouldn't happens. help because this bit isn't in it. Even if he <laughs> does have the books. <laughs> yeah, but you, even while reading the books, you should realise from the books that, hey, on Bond's a bit of a, you know, a wild gun here. He's got a bit of... Also, the to books describe realize. Bond as having, like, brown hair. Yeah, and Bond is blonde in this. So, again, you'd be looking out for a guy with black hair and then Daniel Craig shows up. Do you know what I think the biggest flaw in you'd my plan really is You'd be really confused. <laughs> I think the biggest flaw in my plan is I'm guessing assuming that the, the James Bond books exist in the, in the cinematic James universe Bond, yeah. there's probably no book <sighs> saying that however I do know just of one show the, what, oh. I know of one show um, Supernatural where the Supernatural books the TV are show in exists. the show what the books are in the show uh, there is a very good reason for it I don't want to I'm not going to get into detail no, on don't. this, but no. Right, the death. How do you survive it without going in and <laughs> going read the books? I would have um, 
grenades with me, which as soon as Bond entered the building, I would have like thrown Vesper possibly over the side into the water or even at Bond, and then I just would have dropped, left some henchmen in there to keep slow Bond down, and then I would have thrown several grenades in and left. I'm not trying to save the henchmen here, I'm just trying to save Gettler. Gettler. And then I would have, like, everything would have exploded. Bond would no, because there's no way out. Gettler's on like the top floor. Yeah, well, you get out. You jump to the next building. Then I don't think there's any way to jump get out. out of the window on into the water. Use one of my grenades to blow a hole in the side of the building to then jump out. Done. Then Bond would just chase you once he's dealt with the henchman. No, he wouldn't because he'd be dealing with the other explosions and everything would be flooded. But and he's then, not a firefighter. And then he would have Vesper there. He'd no, just because, chase after you. No, I'm saying there'd be other grenades going off around him. You'd trust throw... henchmen with grenades. Maybe not, but... I'll, don't, yeah, I'll don't. i throw several of my grenades at Bond, so he's going to have uh, several going off, and then i blow a hole through the thing. Bond would and be shooting out. back at you, so you'd probably pull the pin off. I've Duck escaped. For cover I am gone. And explode, but he would chase you down. No, because I would have thrown Vesper at him, and he'd, you know, maybe throw over no, the side. No, because you've locked Vesper in a lift. No, no, I wouldn't lock in a lift. I'd throw over the side, and now he's got a choice to make. Does he save Vesper, or does he continue chasing me? Well, and Vesper, Bond would save Vesper. Vesper dies anyway, so... I know, but Bond, Bond would try and save her before coming after me. Give us your best shot. What you got? Pick up the... Nah, that sucks. And shoot him in the back of the head. Nah, that is boring. Try to strangle him. <laughs> Was so better than your bullshit one. <laughs> Fuck me. No, it isn't. Mine's right. brilliant. It's terrible. No, it is not. He's there just for a simple drop off. He's not expecting Bond to to turn up. Also, Mister White's there as well. He picks up the briefcase full of money. Yeah, he's just watching us happening. Send Mister White instead of Gettler because Mister White's a pretty good shot. Although he gets taken out at the very end of the film. Yeah, only because Bond is sneaky. One on one, White would win. <laughs> no. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. My idea worked better, I think. Grenades. Again, no, because you'd blow up the building. The building would sink quicker, and you'd have to try and escape. And there's, n- you can't escape. At this point, I'm not. I'm not looking to save the money. I'm just trying to escape. It's all about the money. I quit. Then, 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 when you got back to quantum, they'd go, "Where's the money?" No, I quit quantum. You'd quit quantum. What's you the don't protocol? quit quantum. I was going to say, what's the protocol if you start working for one of these organisations like Spectre or whatever? They would probably kill you, you to quit. stop. They'd probably kill you to stop, you know, loose ends and stuff. So Gettler mm. would quit and then you'd be killed eventually. No, because I'd go on a run to South Africa. They would find you. And I would hide out there. And they would kill you. And I'd find Sean Connery. They'd, no. Because Sean Connery's living in South Africa. He's not. From League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. My way's better than yours. Your way's rubbish. <laughs> End of the show. Good news, people. We are on many platforms now. Uh, we are on Podomatic, iTunes, and we're now on Stitcher. Along uh, with YouTube. Oh, and YouTube, which is where all the older video, well, older podcasts are. So, yeah, we're there somewhere. Uh, if you want to contact the show, you can email us. We could survive that at gmail.com or tweet. We could survive. Um, yeah. Or leave comments wherever you may find us. Uh, yeah, we would we would enjoy. Did you give her the email? Them. Sorry. Yes, I just did. Apologies, I completely wasn't listening. <sighs> End the show. You have been listening to We Could Survive That, your weekly survival guide to the movies. We will see you next week. Until then, keep on surviving. Bye bye.